Hi, I'm Christian Boyce, and today I'll be talking about Safari on the Mac. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about my favorite Safari tips and techniques, things that you can use to make your own web browsing more efficient and more fun. The class goes at 2 o'clock today, Pacific Time, and I hope you can make it. So today, today what I want to do for you is I want to show you how to do some really good stuff with Safari. How to get set up properly, um, how to read web pages in, a, in an easier, more clear way, so it's more fun to use, more useful, more efficient, more fun, and how to find what you're looking for, because with so many pages, it's easy to get lost and to um, not be able to find what you want. And sometimes you already found what you want, and now you can't find it again. And I'm going to show you how you, how you get around that because it happens. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to manage the whole thing. There's so many, um, so many bookmarks and tabs and history and craziness that you can easily have, you can have 100 pages open and you can't find what you want. Okay, let's start with getting set up properly. When you set up um, Safari right out of the box, it has certain settings that are mostly right but there's some things i think that you should you should know about first thing is you you want to make sure that the status bar is showing so if, if someone's gone to hide the status bar and then uh you don't have a status bar well you want to show it i'll show you where it is and what it does let's say i was to point to a link on a website like oh like like this one here okay, i'm going to point to a link and you don't really know where it's going to go. When, when you show the status bar, then you know where everything is going to go when you click a link. So now when I, when I point to something here, you can see at the very bottom, the very, very bottom, it says it's going to open HTTPS, blah, 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 blah. You see that down there? Okay. Down here at the bottom, where I'm about to draw, a box. Watch down here when I go to point to a, a link. Okay, do you see there it goes? It tells me where it's going to go. If I go to somewhere else, if there's some other link that I point to, it tells me where it's going to go. This is important because if you don't know where it's going to go, you may end up going somewhere you don't want to go. Okay, let's look at a couple other things. There's a, a really neat bar for favorites, which is called, surprisingly, the favorites bar. That's this section here, where you see I've got a bunch of um, bunch of shortcuts and bookmarks here, and I'll show you how you put stuff in there. But it's a really great way for you to see the the uh, favorites that you really want. They're right in front of me, and instead of going into a bookmarks menu like this, which can be sort of long, <laughs> um, it's still going. I put the ones that I really care about up here in the favorites bar. So just know that in this view menu, there are all kinds of things we can show and hide. Show the favorites bar, make sure the tab bar is showing, make sure the status bar is showing. Those are the most important things there. I want to look at a couple other settings in Safari. There are a lot of settings in Safari. First things first. What do we want to use for the home page? Well, I'm going to set the home page to be um, I'm going to set it to be apple.com because I go there and see what they've got from time to time, and so that's a nice place to go. What you don't need to do is you don't need to make it be Google, and the reason you don't have to make it Google is because we have another way to go to Google that's even better. So if you make this Google, you're kind of wasting an opportunity to do something better. So Pick a, a page that you really like to see every day, NewYorkTimes.com, LATimes.com, um, Google News maybe, but not just plain Google. Okay. Also pay attention down here for where do your downloads go. So it happens all the time. You click something to download it. You don't know where it went. So we're going to make sure that we know where things go because we're going to specify. So if it's up to you, since it is, you can choose 
if you want, you can put it in front of the desktop. You just, just know where they go and that you can set this yourself. If you want them to go on the, on the desktop, this is your chance to do it. One other thing I want you to look at here is just in the tabs, and this is the last preference we're going to look at. When you're in the tabs, um, there are a couple little nice things. There's a lot to know about tabs. So first of all, the, um, this setting here, if I, if I change this to say never, that means when I, when I click, a, click a link, instead of opening up in a new tab, it opens up in a new window. Or if it's a different kind of link, it'll just take me to a different place, but I'll still in, be in the same window. If you want to do, if you want to do this tab thing, and I'll show you what tabs do, you, you end up having one window with lots of web pages in it. That's the beauty of tabs. It's an easier way to, to manage and organize things. But this, so this is up to you. If, if your Mac doesn't work the way you think it should, try changing this. And um, if, that's probably the difference between your laptop and your desktop. There's probably a problem, a mismatch here. This is the other one. This is just a nice little thing to show website icons in tabs. It's not checked by default, but you'll notice when it is checked that you get a little bit of you know visual niceness. Okay, that's all. So we're gonna leave it like that, and you'll see that come into play a little later. All right. So now I am going to um, do one more setup thing, and then we're gonna move on and do some some good stuff. If you look at the toolbar across the top, you see I've got some buttons that you don't normally see. Let me show you what you usually see. Under Customize Toolbar, we have some um, extra buttons I can drag up there, but I'm going to start by dragging up the ones that are standard so you can see the normal thing. Up there at the top is our standard toolbar, and I'm going to highlight that for you here. There's our standard toolbar, okay? Not very exciting. It's just um, you know, a few buttons here and there. We're going to put in some extra buttons. Okay, we're going to put in some extra buttons. And the way we put in these extra buttons, the slow way to do it is to go to Customize Toolbar. So when I do Customize Toolbar, this drops down. And the buttons that I care about the most here are the Zoom buttons. I'll put these up here. That's nice when, when you, can, you can make things bigger and smaller. And what else am I going to put up there? I'm going to put up, um, looking for one more button here, which I don't see, but that's okay. Oh, I'll put the autofill in here too. I did find what I wanted, autofill and iCloud tab. So here's my buttons. And I can... I can move these buttons around. So if you have a button that you want somewhere else, let's say I wanted to put this cloud at the other end because it's kind of cluttered over here, I can just hold the command key and pull it over. Okay, so this is how you rearrange buttons is you hold the command key down and you drag things around. Okay, that's, that's all you do. Now, if you wanted to get rid of a button, you can just you hold the command key and drag it down into the document. So I'm going to get rid of this autofill, even though I just put it there. I'm going to hold the command key. I'm going to pull it down. And when I let go, it's going to go poof. And it's gone. Okay, so poof. No more, no more uh, autofill button. It's a nice button to have. I'm going to put it back, and I'm going to tell you the, the fast way to do it. You hold down the control key, and there's customized toolbar. So I hold the control key, and I click anywhere where there isn't a button in the toolbar. Okay, I'll click over here on the right. Control, click, what's missed? Control, click, and there's Customize Toolbar. And so now I will put the autofill button, I'll put it right here. Could have put it anywhere, but I'll put it right there. Okay, we'll get to what those buttons do in a little bit, but I want you to know that you can customize the toolbar, and that comes in, um, comes in handy. Uh, because there's these things do, these buttons provide new functions that you, you might not know you could do. Okay, let's talk about viewing pages. We're on the part B if you were working on with our a handout. I'm gonna go to ESPN. Now, the way I'm going to ESPN is I'm typing it up here in what we call the smart search bar 
here I am on a web page and I'm going to look for an article that I read earlier today. And when I look at this page, it's, it's a giant mess. There's so much stuff in here. I'm never going to find the article I want. The article was about San Francisco 49ers and a guy named Joey Bosa. So how am I going to find that in here? I can't read this whole thing. It's going to drive me bananas. So what we do is we, we search within the page by doing Command F. So Command F is, um, you'll see it here. Okay, I can just, this is a find. Command F. I'm not going to do it from the menu. I'm going to do it from the from the keyboard. That's the way I would do it. Command F. And now you see it puts a little box in the upper right, and I can search for what I'm looking for here. So I'm going to look for um, Joey Bosa, and I hope I find it. Then I realize, I remember now, he it was on the NFL page. So I'll go to the NFL section. I'll find this. I'll be able to show you that um, we'll find what we want to find. So I'm going to do the Command F again. And... Maybe it wasn't Joey Bosa. Maybe it was uh, 49ers. Because all my, my memory is falling apart here. Okay, here's, here, oh, here we are. So I searched for 49ers. I found the article I want. That's, that's what I was trying to do. So this, this method of searching within a web page for stuff that's on a web page is really handy because um, <laughs> if, you don't, uh, if you don't make use of this command F, you are going to um, spend a lot of time looking for things. Now, this, this by the way, this is not an Adobe Flash update. This is, this is not planned, okay? But I got lucky here, and I want to show you something. I'm going to um, draw you a little box here. Look up here at the top, and you see that just by luck, I seem to be going to a web page that is not Adobe Flash. So I couldn't have rigged this up better if I wanted to. This is something you don't want to fall for. So what this means is that there's an ad on the ESPN site that launched me into a, um, a bad page, and they're trying to get me to install something that isn't Flash. I know it's not Flash because if it was Flash, it would say Adobe up here, and it doesn't say Adobe up here. It says something else. So I'm going to attempt to get out of this. That's nice. Just gonna, I'm just going to close this page. So, there, I closed that page. Boy, that's nice. Let's find our 49er page again. Let's see. See, it could have been this ad. Could have been this ad over here. It's not very nice. Okay, I'm going to try this one more time. Let's go see this ad. So, the problem here is not ESPN's fault, really. They, they can't police all the ads that are placed on their page. So what they do is they, um, on occasion, the bad guys get a, uh, an ad onto the page that is a bad ad that's meant to trick. Okay, so what I want to show you is this thing called responsive design. So when you look at a web page like this, what most people do is they always make their, their windows as big as the, um, as big as the, the screen can be. So this is my full screen big, 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 and I, um, it turns out it's not a good idea. Watch what happens as I make this window a little smaller. So I'm, I'm pulling it in from the side. And you see the, the design of it has changed. And this is, this is something that's, um, that's much more common these days in, in web design than it used to be. And it's called responsive design. It responds to the the size of the window that it's um, being displayed in. So if I keep going like this, you see now it's really clean. So this makes, this makes a, um, a big difference when you're reading. It's much better for me to be reading this than it is for me to be, you know, reading the big one like this where I've got you know, a bunch of junk in the ads and stuff on it. Okay, so, so do this. You know, don't, don't make your, your screen giant. Make it Make it a little smaller and see how the um, how the design of the page will shift around for you. But this is only this is only the scratching the surface here. Next thing we do, we have remember our, our buttons up here. Let me clean up. I've got too many 
boxes on the screen, but you might remember these buttons up here. These guys, I'm trying to draw these guys right here. Remember these buttons? Well, we're going to make those buttons do something good here. Okay. So let's do it. What we do is when we click them, they either make things bigger or they make things smaller. So I'll make bigger, 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 bigger. So now this is something, something that's easy to read. It's still a little, it's a little uh, messy with um, interruptions. You know, you've got uh, these things in the way. You've got some sort of ad here. So this is not quite as good as we want it to be. So even though I made it bigger and it's better, it's better because we made the, the screen smaller and we made the um, we made the window smaller and we made the text bigger. It's not as good as it can get. Notice up here in the um, in the in the bar here, there's this, these horizontal lines. And I will try to highlight those for you too. Let's see what I can do here. There's these horizontal lines there. Those indicate that there's something special about this page. And what's special about it is that there's something called the reader view that's available to this page. So let me just, first I'll show you what it does and then we can talk about it. So here's the reader view. When I do this, the page recomputes and it gets laid out again in a different way. Nice and clean. Okay, I still have the picture here, but incredibly clean, super duper clean. So it's, it's really nice for people that like to read it. What you want to do is read, read the story. This is the, this is the best. So what else can we do about this? Well, when we do the reader view, um, we also have options and those are here in the, the right hand side of the, the address box where it says a uh, little a and a big a. We're going to click on these a's and look at the options we get. First of all, I can change the background. So now it's like this. When I change the background, they change the color of the text as well. I can change like this. If I want to read it like this, if I want to read it like this, that's fine. Now let's say, let's say I like it like this, but I want it bigger yet. I have a big A. I can click this and I can click this and I can click this and, and it's bigger, bigger, bigger. So it really makes it nice to read. Uh, if you want a different font, you can just pick another font. I'll pick Georgia. And then now, it's, now it's Georgia. So change your mind anytime you want. I'll go back to this one that's called San Francisco. And there it is again. So the reader view is great. And if, if you're dealing with long chunks of text, long stories, the reader view is, is the best. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing comparable. So uh, that's what you do when you can, but you don't always get to do it. So if you forget about this button up here, the reader view, um, when I, when I click it, it goes away, but you can find the reader view under view right here, show reader. So this, this is the exact same thing. Okay, good. Now let's talk about, let's talk about ads. I'm going to get out of the reader view. You notice that reader view stripped away the ads, nice and clean. None of that junk at the bottom that distracting. So what do we do here? If we, if we still want to see the original layout and what well, we don't want to have ads, how do we get rid of these ads? Well, there are a lot of ad blockers out there. The one that I think is the best is called wiper. Okay, so wiper you get from the app store. Now I'm going to see if I have, um, wiper on this machine already. If I do, that will be, um, That'd be handy, save me some time. Yeah, okay, so here's, this is, Wiper is installed. I'm gonna show you how to, how to make it block the ads. I'm also gonna show you here how to go get it. You go to the app store like this, or if you have the handout that I gave you, you click the link in the handout. So all you would do is go to the app store and search for WIPR. There are others, there are other ad blockers out there, but this is the one that I like. And so, anyway, get that. Okay, let's look at um, 
why this this web page is still showing ads if it's so great how that how that happened well every website has settings so this is uh, in safari you can say look for this particular website these are the settings for me and you see the content blocker here is not turned on so wiper is a content blocker it blocks the ad content so i'm gonna turn it on and when I do this, the page is going to reload, and we should see a cleaner, a cleaner page. The reason you have to know how to turn it on and off is because some web pages won't allow you to use them if you don't let them show their ad because they got to get paid. So this one worked out fine, and I think at the bottom we had the worst ads, and they seem to be, they seem to be okay. So. The um, Safari will remember that I like to have Wiper turned on for this page, and by default it is on for um, for web pages. But for some reason I turned it off. That is um, that's how you make things look better. You use use the the A's like this, make it bigger. You use the reader view when you can, and you use these A's to modify these A's over here to modify what you get out of the reader view. So I'm going to um, take a, a little break here to look for questions from all of you. So let's see. Make my arrow bigger. That's a great idea. Thanks, Cheryl. If this weren't my substitute machine, I would have had it bigger already. Let's make that arrow bigger. So in case you wondered, system preferences, accessibility, and then display, and we'll make the cursor size bigger. Now you see the cursor. Okay, good. Good point, Cheryl. All right. You're on it. You get an A. Okay, so now um, this bar up here, I told you before that, that it was a bad idea to make Google be your homepage. The reason it's a bad idea is because it doesn't have to be your homepage. In fact, if I clear out everything that's in this address up here, you see a tiny little magnifying glass. If I click on this little magnifying glass, I see the different search engines that I could use. Now, I'm using Google. This is Google up here. If I go up here and I search for, um, oh, I don't know, I will look for uh, Mac News, and we'll see if I find some, some Google search results about Mac News. And sure I do. Of course I do. Okay, so that's that's why you don't need to put um, put Google in as a homepage. I don't have to go like this. I can go to Google.com, take that step, and I can go here and I can look for Mac News and I can hit return. Exact same place I was before. So why bother with the extra step? Just click up here and type in what you're searching for and hit return. Now. Um, shortcut that didn't make the handout is to get up here. This is kind of hard to do. It's a little bit small. The way you do it, the way you get into that box, and of course you can click in the box, but what normal people do is they, you know, they click up here and they start deleting like this and they type something in. Okay, well, I'm going to put us back to where we were again um, so you can see that I've got a better way to do it. The way you do it is you use command L, a L for location. So command key, that's down there by the space bar and then an L, you know what an L is. So when I do command L, it jumps right up there. So that's very handy. It saves you a lot of, um, a lot of clicking around, a lot of mousing around. And really that's the slowest part of using the Mac is, is it's us. So with the exception of my machine that seems to have died today, um, they're usually faster and better than, than we are. So uh, when you can do shortcuts like this, then you start to you know, change the equation. On your handout, you see on, on the third page, talk about finding what you're looking for. And I show that I've, I was searching for things like Los Angeles Dodgers. And when I did this, okay, you see I typed, L Los Angeles do. I didn't finish. 
but you can see that they're, they're, they've provided me information already. I don't have to go to a web page to get this information. It's coming right out of this so-called smart search bar up here. So this is kind of neat because sometimes you, you just want the information. You don't want to go to a web page to get the information. You just want it. So if you can get it direct, this is, this is um, a time saver. So let's do, let's do something else. I'm going to search for, um, I'll look for Apple stock. If I do Apple S-T-O-C-K, they, there they go. Now, those of you who know the stock symbol would think, well, why don't you just type in A-A-P-L? And that's what I'll do. Let's do it. I'm going to do A-A-P-L. I'm not hitting return. I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting them uh, provide the information when they think they, they know enough. Now, of course, below that, I still have the, the Google searches that I could do. So, you know, when I was up here before and I did Los Angeles D, and they, okay, even with one D, they know. I could still go search for the Dodgers, right? I could still do a web page search. But if I want, just want to know the score of the game that they're not playing today, um, this is a neat way to go. So suppose I want the weather. I start typing Austin weather. And before, before I know it, there it is. So this is a very smart search bar. Very, very smart. So you should make use of this bar. A lot of times people kind of look the other way with this bar. They, they, don't, they don't look at it at all, really. And they rely on going to, to Google's web page, typing something in, hitting return. And um, besides being slow, there's something really wrong with that. So I'm going to show you what's the worst thing about it and I try to talk you out of uh, ever doing that again. So I'm going to go up to the top again, and I'm going to search for, let's say, let's say, let's say you, you have um, a printer, and let's say HP makes a printer, and let's say you're having a problem with the printer. So what do you do? You look for HP technical support. Okay, so let's, let's do. I'm going to, since I'm a fast learner, I'm going to do Command L, jump up there. I'm going to put in HP printer support, okay? And I'm going to hit return. And the first result I get is, um, this, looks, this looks good. I'm going to make this bigger so we can see even more. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so this one, this time I got lucky, but in the handout, you might have noticed that I didn't get lucky. What happened with, with uh, when I first did my search for, for HP printer support is I got this one, okay? And this is not HP. Now, there's a lot of monkey business that goes on with these, with sites like this. These guys are trying to take your money. They are not HP even though they say HP all over the place. If you go to the page, you'd see that they are, um, they're trying to trick you, okay? They're trying to trick you. So you see this is not a very good, good page, but they basically they say HP support about 50 times in this, in this uh, web page. Here they are, HP support, HP support. HP support for popular states. See like this here? Um, Oh, California is a popular state. That's exciting. Okay, so the um, the game with these guys is to try to fool Google and make them be the top hit when you do a search. And they were the top hit when I searched before. So I'm going to look for one more thing. Um, let's see if I can look for HP technical support. Okay, this is good. The reason I know it's good, this here, it says hp.com. This is the part that matters. Don't fall for something just because it's at the top of the page. Make sure you look and see, does it say hp.com at the end or apple.com or whatever else it is, or adobe.com. Okay, we're going to do something really cool here. We are going to make some bookmarks, okay? So bookmarks are, are so important because you're going to have all these pages you want to come back to. So I'm going to do a search. I'm going to search for... Birds of California, okay? Okay, so I found, I find some, some birds. I did a search. And now I'm going to look at a web page. Go to audubon.com. 
And this is, let me show you what happens here is we, we go to we go to a web page and then we see something else that looks interesting. I think I'll go read this. And I, I go over here. This looks interesting too. And before long, you're a long way away from the search you did. And so to get back to the search, you know you could go back. You could hit the back button, I think now three times, or you could even click on this and hold it and try to find the search in here. But um, there's a better way. And that is um, right here. The search results snap back. Now, who uses this? Well, hopefully you and me, because when you do this, it takes you right back to the last search you did. That's pretty cool. Now I can go find another page that maybe I want to look at. Maybe I'll go look at, at this one. So that's a, um, that's a real time saver. You don't have to try to remember what did I search for exactly. Okay. So now I want to show you um, about the bookmarks, I promised you. But before I get there, I want to do one more thing. Supposing, supposing here on this, on this, um, search results. Suppose I want to look at some of these pages, but I don't want to leave the search. And so what I do, I hold down the command key. And you remember the command key next to the space bar? I'm going to hold the command key down and I'm going to click a link. And what's going to happen, instead of going to that page, it's going to make me a new tab in that, on the same page. So here's, you see, here's the tab. Okay. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to look for, here's another one I wanted to look at. I'll look at that. And I'm going to look at, uh, this one looks interesting too. So I'm holding on the command key and I'm clicking links. What I'm getting are tabs. So here's a tab, here's a tab, here's a tab, and they're all in the same window. Pretty handy. So this, the, the, this is tabs. This is what tabs all about. So we can do a few other things with this. If there's a page that we're going to use a lot, then we want to kind of keep it around. So I'm going to say, this looks like a really good page. What you do is you, you grab the page here, you grab the tab and you drag it way over to the left, like so, here I go. There, you see it got kind of small. It's very small, but it looks like a bird. And there's a bird on it, but there's, that's, that page is now represented by that little, that little mark. So I could make uh, this one, if I like this one, I can grab it again. I'm just grabbing the tab and I'm pulling it over here until it's see a little bitty square there. So now I can switch between these tabs like this. Very nice. Okay, so that's that's a, a neat thing to do with tabs. But now, supposing, supposing um, I have an arrangement like this, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my own arrangement here. I'm gonna make a new page and I'm gonna a new window. And in this window, I'm going to go to some of the places that that I really would want a bookmark for. So I'm going to look at a, a web page called Mac Rumors. And I type a little bit. They got it all figured out. So I'm just going to hit return. Okay, here's Mac Rumors. Then I'm going to make a new tab. And the tab, way over here in the right, there's a little plus. And there are keyboard shortcuts for that too. But I'm going to type in, I'm going to go to Mac and Touch, another good website, long time Mac guy, not me. And I'm gonna hit the plus again, I'm gonna go to Daring Fireball. And you see these, the, the smart search bar, bar is very smart. It knows what I'm typing. So I don't type the whole thing, I type a little bit. I notice they got it right, I hit return. And finally, I'm gonna hit the, uh, the new tab button again, and I'm gonna go to Apple site, for um, for news releases. So they have one newsroom that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna do like that and we'll just, let's see what happens here. So I can read the press releases from Apple. So these, all four of these pages are pages that I need to look at every day. I look at this one, I look at this one, I look at this one, I look at this one. Here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to have to make a bookmark for each one. Now there are ways to make bookmarks. It's easy, really easy. There's, I'm going to show you at least three ways. I can click over here on the share button and there's add bookmark. Okay, that would work. 
I can click over here and I can drag it into a certain place and add a bookmark that way. I can come up here and add a bookmark. But the way I'm going to do it for these four pages that I like so much, I'm going to go here to bookmarks and I'm going to say add bookmarks for these four tabs. Okay, so I've got I've got a window full of tabs, and I'm going to add a book add bookmarks for these four tabs. Okay, here we go. And what happens? Well, I'm going to call it, we can call it what we want to call it. I'm going to call it um, I'm going to call it daily Mac reading, and then I get to decide where it's going to go. I want it to go up here, so I'm going to choose where it goes right here. So it's going to go in the favorites because that's my favorites bar. And I say add, I hope. And I don't see it up here, but I'm gonna go look at my bookmarks and we're gonna edit this and we're gonna put it where I want it. Let's see. So when I go to edit bookmarks, I see all these bookmarks. And so in the favorites, it's, it should be at the very bottom of this list because it's the last one I made. And that's, that's unfortunate, but it's the way it goes. Here it is, Daily, Daily Mac Reading. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to bring it up. I won't, because there wasn't room for it on the bar, but it, I'm going to put it right at the very, very beginning. So now, look at this. So now it's Daily Mac Reading. So how's this going to work? Well, suppose we close this page. Okay, I'll close this window too. Okay. So now how am I going to get to my daily Mac reading? Well, you see it's right here. And if I click on it, here's my four, my four um, bookmarks that were automatically made. But this is only, we're only scratching the surface here. I'll click again, hold it down. The Mac and Touch. So this is nice because it, it collected all of those tabs that I had open for that, that daily reading project. But now watch this. If I control click on this, you can see that it's set to automatically replace tabs. So that means, what that means is if I just click on this, it opens all four of them. You see that? So there's, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. So if you're working on a particular project and within one Safari window, you have multiple tabs and you want to sort of keep that together as a group for future use. This is how you do it. You get your tabs going and you come up here and you say, add bookmark for these tabs. Now we've already done it. You might notice, by the way, sharp eyed people that over here we have the two bird tabs that were pinned before. They're still there. That's it's because by dragging them over here, we pinned them. So they are there in every window. If I make a new window, here they are still. Okay, this is a new window, but they're still here. And that's what pinning them is for. It's kind of like a super bookmark. It's even better than a bookmark. It's right in front of you, and it's a picture, and it's nice and fast. So, so you want to do that. Okay, now let's do something really cool here. I'm going to close this window, and sometimes you have a lot of tabs open. Here's this button over here on the top right, this button. This one shows the tabs. So you see these are the tabs that are open for the window I'm on, OK? That's, that's it. They're there for the window I'm on. Now, if I were using 10.15 Safari, down below here we would also see a list of all the websites that are open on my other devices, iPhone, iPad, uh, my other Mac that's not working, and um, we could pick from those. But this is a way that you can see the tabs that you have open right now in this window. This is actually searchable, and you can't. There is no search bar until you do Command F. And now I'm searching, and you see here it's searching the tabs. So if I was looking for the one that was about Audubon, I find it like this by typing a little bit. Then I can click on it and go there. So tabs are searchable. But remember, this is only the tabs for this one window. So if I look at some other windows back here, I know I have others. Um, you know, here's a uh, manual for HP. And, you know, here's, I have a whole bunch of different 
different uh, uh, windows open, but you know it just doesn't show me doesn't show me anything but the tabs for this one window. So I'll do this one more time. You can see I have a whole bunch of windows open plus the two pinned tabs. That's why we always have these. But I could search these too. So I could I could search for the one that has the word iTunes in it if there is one. And there it is. So so remember you can search the tabs. Remember also you can search the bookmarks. So I go to edit bookmarks. I can um, I can search this over here. And if I go to history, which is the last thing I want to show you, is um, history is also searchable. So it's also grouped together with history from my other devices. So um, some of these pages I didn't go to on this computer. There's some pages I went to on other devices. Okay, so let, let me show you something else here. Suppose I close a window, like, like this window that has all of these tabs open. Must have been important to me at, at the time. Well, if I close that window and then I change my mind, like, oh no, I got to get that back. And I had six tabs, seven tabs. I can go here to history and say, reopen the last closed window. And when I do that, they come back. Yay. Now it's even better than that. Um, if you were to quit Safari and look how many windows I have open. If I quit it, and then I start up Safari again, I can come here to history and I can say, we open all the windows from the last session. This is your ace in the hole. When you accidentally do command Q, when you meant to do command W, and you quit the whole thing, you'll, you can go right back and reopen all windows from last session and your problems are over. I do have a lot of windows here. All of these windows, how can I see these windows? Well, we know that on a Mac, we have a keyboard button in the top row, F3, it's got a bunch of little rectangles on it. When I push it, look at what I see. Lots and lots of windows. But I only want to see the ones for the program I'm in, for Safari. So the trick, because this is really not useful, right? There's too many, too many windows. I can't find out. I can't find what I want. If I hold the control key down and I press that F3, I just see the Safari windows. Ooh. Ah. Okay. So once I see this, then I can see, okay, this is, this is the page I wanted to go to. I can click on this, and there I am. So again, Control and F3, that'll do it. That's a really, really, really handy thing to know how to do, because now I can pick out just from my, uh, my Safari windows. Hold down the Control key and hit Tab, and it'll jump you from, from Tab to Tab. So Control and Tab to go from tab to tab, control and shift and tab to go backwards. Okay, that's handy. And finally, if I close the window, that closes all the tabs. When you stay in the Safari family, everything works really well. If you, if you are using Safari on the phone and Chrome on your computer, or Safari on the phone and Firefox on your computer, there's no interaction. They don't know what each other has done. So many times you, you come across uh, an article, maybe you get an email and you, it's a link and you use a link and you go to your, you're doing it on your iPhone and you see a web page that you want to read later, but you, you really can't read it on, on the phone. It's, maybe it is too small. So you go to your Mac and with iCloud tabs in Safari, you'd be able to, to, to find it. That's the last of uh, what I have for you. So any other questions, please email me, macman at christianvoice.com. Go to, go to christianvoice.com and get the, um, get the handout. Looks like this. That'll refresh your memory. And there'll be a video of this um, in a day or two.